Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone My name is Venisa Ayu Indira from 4C Today, I'm going to make an article summary video on this YouTube channel Without any further ado, let's start The first article is a comparison of the impact of extensive and intensive reading approaches on the Korean EFL learners' reading rate and reading comprehension development by A. Young Park. The study purposes are to know whether learners from different proficiency levels get benefits more from ER or IR approaches and to know which reading proficiency consists of reading rate and reading comprehension development gets the most benefits from each approach between ER and IR. The findings are there is a significant improvement in the ER group's reading rate with 24% compared to the IR group's reading rate with only 11%. And the reading comprehension score of the ER group was also higher by 70% than IR since ER is effective to improve participants' reading rate and to make learning more meaningful. The second article is the role of silent way method to English teaching in a private Islamic middle school by Agus Budiarto. The study purpose is to discover the role of silent way method for EFL and to discover which EFL's proficiency affected by silent way method. The findings are the students accomplish in pronouncing EFL correctly since silent way method forces the students to say the words with the signal given by the teacher. Second, the students accomplishing in EFL grammar since Silent way method was required the students to find out by themselves about the pattern of EFL grammar. Last, the students become autonomous learners since the students were forced to become active partakers and think carefully to get a better comprehension about the lessons. The third article is the use of the communicative language Teaching Approach to Improve Students' Oral Skills by Vanessa Toro, Gina Kamako Minuche, Eliana Pinza Tapia, and Fabian Paredes. The study purpose is to discover the use of the communicative language teaching approach in the English classroom to improve students' oral skills. The findings are first, Grouping the students increased their motivation to use the language and the opportunities to learn from each other were bigger. Second, some teachers used modeling such as visual and body language and repetitions to make students confident and learn the language in a meaningful way. Last, most teachers used metalinguistic and elicitation feedback to correct students' mistakes which allowed students to use the language without feeling interrupted. The next article is EFL teaching in the Amazon region of Ecuador, a focus on activities and resources for teaching listening and speaking skills by Paul, Cesar, Paula, Lars, Anna, Lida, Franklin, Eva, and Maria. The study purposes are to analyze the classroom's current implementation and extracurricular activities, and to analyze the educational resources for teaching speaking and listening in public senior high school in the Amazon region of Ecuador. The findings are first, the most frequent activities which was used to improve listening skills are competition exercises and dialogues, while to improve speaking skills are dialogues and repetitions. Second, the most recommended extracurricular activities for practicing students' listening skills were listening to English music with lyrics, watching videos, and talking to native speakers, while for speaking skill, were watching videos at home and discussing them in classroom and having conversation with English native speakers. Last, the audio CD which comes with the textbooks is the most used resource 
to teach listening and speaking in classroom. The next article is Using Communicative Games in Improving Students' Speaking Skills Written by Ratnasari Dewi, Umi Kulsum, and Ari Armadi The study purposes are to analyze whether there is an impact of communicative games on teaching speaking skill or not and to analyze how communicative games can influence students' speaking skills at junior high schools in Jakarta Finding is communicative games were successfully improved student speaking skills since the speaking mean score of the students before the research was 60.42 but the speaking mean score of students after the research was 78.77 The next article is an analysis of English teachers' strategies in teaching reading comprehension by Yulia Engar, Wigati Wibowo, Shafrizal, and Shafriyadi. The study purpose is to analyze the strategies used by English teachers in teaching reading comprehension at one of senior high school in Bengkulu. The finding is, some strategies are used by the teachers in teaching reading. The highest percentage were question generating with 27%, encouraging the use of dictionaries with 25%, and question answering with 23%. The next article is the effectiveness of scientific approach and contextual teaching and learning approach in teaching writing by Nidia Indrila. The study purpose is to analyze and provide information about the effectiveness of teaching writing using scientific approach and contextual teaching and learning approach. The findings are, first, using the scientific approach and the CTL approach are more effective than the conventional approach in teaching writing. Last, the CDL approach is more effective than the scientific approach in teaching writing. The next article is Moroccan Teachers' Level of ICT Integration in Secondary EFL Classrooms by Yasin Aidhamo and Muhammad El Fatihi. The study purpose is to analyze the level of ICT use of Moroccan male and female teachers in the curriculum. The finding is there is no difference between Moroccan male and female teachers I see the level of use in the classrooms which show that it is actually similar. The next article is Autonomous Learning Through Test-Based Instruction in Fully Online Language Courses by Lina Lee. The study purpose is to investigate the affordances of test-based education combined with Web 2.0 technology for autonomous learning in a completely online learning environment. The findings are first, students were able to alter their schedules to complete online assignments due to convenient access to course materials and activities, which aided the learning process. Second, the kind of assignments and digital technologies utilized in the online course were well received by students which kept them motivated throughout the semester and engaged them in collaborative work with their peers. Last, teaching scaffolding provided context and motivation for students to comprehend the learning material as well as the processes to complete online activities. The last article is an analysis of student speaking anxiety toward their speaking skill by Juni Bayu Saputra. The study purpose is to examine students speaking anxiety at one of Lampung's colleges of teacher training and education aka STKIP. The findings are first, before and after the implementation of CLT, there is a change in students' speaking abilities, which showed when students are able to manage their anxiety, their ability to communicate is undisturbed. 
Second, students with low speaking anxiety have stronger speaking skills than students with high speaking anxiety because high anxiety speakers are fearful of making mistakes, receiving feedback, and unfavorable comments. Last, there is a relation between teaching method, speaking ability, and student speaking anxiety because the correct teaching technique, CLT, can drive students to be active and engaged in speaking activities during the teaching and learning process in the classroom. In conclusion, there is no best or worst method in teaching English, but there is only suitable and unsuitable method which is selected by considering the student's learning type, characteristic, and type of intelligences. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.